In the first part of Inside My Stable with Steve Turnbull, we discussed his property at the lagoon and he also spoke about his admiration for his wife and children. In this second part, we will learn about Steve's best horse, Smooth Satin, and we will also find out more about the attempted kidnapping of the Miracle Mile and Inter-Dominion winner. Take us back to the, the Smooth Satin days. When he arrived, what did you think? Was he going to be a star? Um, not till he, he actually started trolling. Um, up till then, uh, it was only two or three weeks before Laurie said if I bought a dud, and I said, no, he, he's tough, but he just he just can't get balanced around the corners yet. And uh, he was a fairly tall, narrow fella, and uh, used to get a little bit crossed up in the corners, but um, then we, we trialled him a couple of times. He did a few things wrong in there too, but it always find the line, and then uh, uh, Jack Butler actually took him in one night and uh, trialled him, and he, he got home in 58 and went sensational on the old track and uh, it just went from there. He, I think he had eight starts as a two-year-old and you gave him a couple of starts as a three-year-old and then it was off to the Victoria Derby heat. So once you got to that stage, you, you knew you had a serious racehorse? Oh, for sure, yeah. He'd won the size stakes, um, uh, the, the heats and finals of it. and. Uh, I don't think he got beat much as a two-year-old. He uh, couldn't handle banks down one night. They top-dressed the track, and uh, so it was loose and then hard. And uh, when he'd hit the loose spot, he used to get rough and jump out of his gear, and he still flew home that night. And, uh, yeah, so we, we, we thought he had a pretty good one that night. He he finished fifth in that race at Bankstown, and I don't think he finished outside the top four in a race after that until the Victoria Cup. Yeah. Um, like the... the the races that he competed in in between those two runs was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, and, and they weren't just rubbish races. They were they were good races, a lot of them, and and there were some nice horses coming through that at that era too. Like Joe Fest had won, and he went, ended up winning an Inner Dominion. Um, uh, you got uh, Ocean Spirit, um, Harry's horse that he, double yeah, double identity. Yeah, mm. uh, there was three or four nice horses coming through, and. Uh, had to drive socks accordingly with those horses. Um, Ocean Spirit could sprint a bit, um, and the other two were uh, downstairs. So if you're back last and they were up the front, and they got they could run 228 quarters, which is a half and 56 round Harold Parks were flying. Um, he could go up, he could go a 27 and a 28. So if you use that 27 up there to get up level with them, they'd keep plugging away at their 28 and, and beat you. So sitting on them, I could beat them, but, or be in front of them, but uh, you couldn't come from too far back and beat them because they were just, they, they'd just turn the handlebars down at the bell and go hard. From the 9th of March 2001 to the 15th of March 2002, he won chariots, he won a Miracle Mile, and he won an Inter-Dominion. That was an unbelievable 370 odd days. Yeah, I think he went to Ben Hur in the middle of that too. Yeah, that's yeah. freakish. Yeah, so that was that was. Uh, see, he went over uh, Miracle Mile, and then I think the um, Ben Hur. It was a standard start over twenty nine hundred metres. So, uh, and he won that. So he was pretty versatile. He was a. Uh, he he could. Um, he he didn't like getting used real hard out of the gate. He had a bit of speed, but it, um, I used to just let him come out with him and then and then do different things, but. Um, if, uh, I found if you really burned him as hard as he could out of the gate, he, he, um, he, he couldn't finish it off as quite as good, but not many can. Take us through his Miracle Mile. What was, I think you drew four? Yeah. Just come out of gate four? Yeah. Did you think you were a, a winning chance going into the race? Uh, just uh, like the new kid on the block. Um, and uh, I, I thought they'd go hard early and they... Um, a bloke called Ian Thorne said they always back off on the second quarter and I thought he had it in my mind to take off and I thought <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble if I do but uh, he, uh, he always liked to be up there with them so they did, it just worked perfect. They went out hard, uh, then they back right off so I pulled out and let him sneak up and then the next minute they come around and give him the 1-1 one -one and so he was up in the charge of mine and hadn't really worked at all because the deaf seat didn't really worry him because he... he uh, it was like he knew what speed to go, he'd just poke along at their wheel and then when you ask him to go, he'd, he'd, he'd give it to them. But in front he used to get a bit lost, he'd get stargazing and then carry them. What about the Inner Dominion win? What can you remember of that? Yeah, well he was cherry ripe, the, the draw knocked the um, colour out of my face a bit when he'd come out. But um, when um, 
when he drew so bad, but I was always going to take off some, one part of it. And uh, when I did, and then uh, Joe Fest got off the fence, I thought, how good's this? Because I knew he came straight away, and he did. Um, so then he takes you straight into the race because they always uh, used to give it to him with the bell and while I was sitting up there smiling then. Horses like Shaker Maker, Courage Under Fire, Joe Fess, Taylor Mate Lombo, they, you know, think back to those those times. As a, it was a special era to be to have, to have one of those top horses. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and, and, and like you, the, those names you just mentioned, they, they were the greatest and you think, Gee, uh, to be part of them and actually beat them one night, it was yeah, something else. Something, uh, plenty's been written about this, but the kidnapping attempt in yeah. 2002, um, what happened? Well, um, Bernie and Kathy Hewitt were living in uh, the old, I had a mud pizza place over there for, where Josh lives now, and um, they were living there when they first come over from Cookwell, and um, they heard a bit of a commotion outside and um, they heard a loud bang and... Um, and then um, Kath walked out and there was someone leading socks up the hill and they they said what are you doing he said yeah everything's right it's Craig and she went no that's that wasn't Craig my brother and uh, so she went in and taught, said to Bernie there's something not right going on and uh, and then Bernie come out and seen socks was, was missing and he said um, are you doing anything with socks tonight and I went no what do you mean and he said well he's not in his stall and I went hell and then they, they smelt, you know, I said, oh, something wrong there. So they, they flew out and um, apparently they, he, he put his foot up on the tailboard, but it was a dark float and that, and then being a bit spoiled too, the old bugger, <laughs> he, um, he just backed back on them and then they weren't horsemen or anything like that. So they've hit the panic button. Thank God they tied him up to an old jogger machine and, and then they've took off. Um, well, then Bernie's come up and naturally he's had a quick look at the horse to make sure it was all right. I was the same, I come burning, uh, flying over and and he had a look at him, make sure he was okay. And uh, then Bernie gave chase, but they um, they went over to a place called Purfil and then dumped the float. Well, then we didn't have a clue who it was then. Uh, we, yeah, since found out different things and uh, we're nearly sure we knew who it was, but um, yeah. We'd, An extortion yeah. thing, you think? Um, yeah, like, I, I, like I, I, yeah. a ransom sort just, of thing. Yeah, just desperates that uh, needed money quick, and um, there was an electric fence, which I'm glad they didn't put him in because he, he would have, uh, he, if he touched that, I don't know where he would have ended up. But apparently, um, there was an electric fence stolen down at the showground with the float was stolen, um, so they were going to go and hide him somewhere. Uh, it was a bit after dark, so they probably ring Laurie and say, you know we want such and such a cash and uh, don't tell anyone or there'll be or you won't see your horse again or something like that and I don't know they, they were just desperates and um, and and they, they've gone over and dumped the float so we couldn't find them no, we didn't know who they were and it um, anyhow thank god it worked out all right but yeah that's a wake-up call then we built some stables over near the house and tried to but then he wouldn't, didn't like it over there. He wanted to be over with his mates, so we just had to put him back over there and hope to God no one else did it. You, one thing you did do with the horse, you took him to the country. You let the country people see him, something that um, Barry Lou did with Carlo Mick as well, the, the country champ. And um, did, did that give you a bit of a thrill? Oh, for sure, yeah. We, yeah, we went to Tamworth Dubbo. We went, went around a fair bit with him uh, without killing him, but... Um, yeah, uh, and uh, I, I think the, the the company people really get behind him, and they, they uh, uh, like Carlo Mick. They they well, uh, yeah. There's a lot of people in the country that are interested in the game, and uh, yeah, that that was a big thing. It, it was actually good to travel interstate with him too. We we met some good people and good friends over there over the the years that he was um, racing. It was it was good times. Tough decision to pull the pin. It was. Um, he got he got beat in a, a race at Dubbo actually, and um, he was. This was the second time, <laughs> um, and he come back very agitated. He um, it was like he knew he, he he should be able to beat these easy, and he couldn't. And we were, we didn't want him to like overexert his heart and upset himself, so um, just pulled the plug. And he went to Laurie's place to yeah, to, to yeah. live out his time. Yep. What about the uh, the gold crown? You haven't won it as a trainer, but you won it as a driver with Burrell. Yeah. Special night? 
It was, yeah, it was. Yeah, it's just something you always try to do. Um, um, ran third in it in a couple of places. Uh, ran second in it to Woi Woi Karamuda early in the early in the career. And it's something that I'd like to train and drive. I was actually hoping this year, but um, me, the horse I had hoping um, he, he uh, ended up doing a sprint bone in his back leg. He's going to be okay, thank goodness. But um, he went uh, 57 round Bathurst his first start, and he had this sprint problem then. So, well. Yeah, had big hopes for him, but uh, yeah, yeah, we'll have to look at next year, I suppose. With, with Burrell, Glenn Powell, how did the, the relationship there come about? How did you get the drive? I don't know. He just just rang me and asked me. Uh, he, he was just more of a hobby trainer and driver and um, just asked me would I um, drive him. And, um, yeah, everything just worked beautiful for him. He, he had a good seat up close and um, a nice drawer. And, it was his night. So is that the one thing that you want to do before you say, I've had enough? Or yeah, that would want to train, train the gold crown winner? That would be good. Yeah, <laughs> that would be good. And, and just in wrapping up, the, the, the move from the showground to the uh, to the new track at Bathurst, what do you think of that? Uh, yeah, it's been good, especially for the uh, public, uh, or in us, but um, the public have got a, a nice place now to have a meal. Uh, they have functions there. Um, the stabling's good. The sta stabling was good at the other joint too, but this this is really good and spacious. Space. Um, the track, find the track really good uh, at the old track. At, like especially the trials, there'd be like heaps of pegs getting knocked out. Uh, whereas the, you find the new one at the trials that hardly you never see one yet. The young ones seem to just glide around the corners. Um, and, the, and I don't think the straights are, are that much longer, but it's got beautiful big sweeping corners, which helps the young ones especially. There'll be no excuses this year for um, horses not handling the track or anything, in my opinion. Do you think that the new Bathurst tracks helped your stats at Menangle, or is it just you've got the, the current crop of horses that are that are Menangle horses, you know, horses like He's a Thrill um, and, and, you know, McArdle's uh, ch ch chance, you know, horses mm. that are ready for Menangle racing, or is it is it is it a timing thing, or is it the the changing track? A bit of both, a bit of both. Um, probably, um, yeah. You, you go through runs where you have different horses. Um, yeah, like you, you might have a Menangle team, or uh, like the old Harrow Park team, or you or you just got a Bush team, or whatever. But um, the the last um, probably twelve months, we've just had. Um, uh, there's a lot of nice horses, some Kiwis and that, that have come through and, um, and and been a bit above average, which they can go down there and be competitive. Well, thanks for showing us through your stable today and all the best of luck. Hopefully that gold crown winner's just around the corner. Yeah, good on you, mate. Thank you.